today I'm going to show you how to make RGB color logic that work in Little Big Planet 2 and 3. Alright, so no matter which version you're playing, the first thing you want to do is place a timer. So pause your game so the timer doesn't run. And then just set the timer to forwards backwards. Then copy and paste it twice. And then the first timer should be red because the first value of RGB is red. Green should be the second one. Then blue will be the third one. Color coding these will make it easier to understand later on. The RGB tweaker is from this level and is by this dude right here. And it's found at the end of the level. If you're using the RGB tweaker, you want to place it in a separate microchip. Because if you don't, you won't be able to move it later. I'll show you that in a second. You just want to place the RGB tweaker anywhere in the microchip. Then you can set it to orange so you know what it's for. You can also name the microchip, like something like RGB tweaker. And you see, right now, I can't move it. Like, I'm trying to move it, but I can't, and I can't delete it either. This is why I placed it in a separate microchip. In case I wanted to move it around later, I could. Alright, so why are the first timer to red? Because RGB, so red, green, and blue. So you just want to wire it in order. And then, what you want to do, place it on something that's color changeable. Such as sticker panel. It's really important to set it to 50% brightness, that way the colors fade nicely when we set up the logic for that. And then place this on here. So to show you that the RGB tweaker does in fact work, I'm just going to hook up a toggle to the timer to see the colors fade. So it fades to blue, and then it could fade to pink, it could also fade to yellow. That was just showing how the RGB tweaker works, not the actual tutorial. The RGB tweaker works for any object that has a rainbow icon, like this object. It will also work for materials with the icon, like this one. Decorations with the icon have to be placed on sticker panel with 0% opacity, so the material won't show. Only the decoration. It works for stickers, but set the brightness to 50%, so it fades smoothly. My sticker was white and red, but the colors will look better if it only had white, or white and black. It does work for lights, but it doesn't work for light boxes. So any light that you have to place on something and you can't place in midair, it won't work for those lights. So you see, those can't change color. But you can use a spherical LED that's invisible and does not physics to create a similar effect. So I used a 0% opacity tweaker and a physics tweaker with collisions off. If you're in Little Big Planet 2, you can use hologram. Make sure it's set to big grid because you're going to be putting these on top of each other. Set the brightness to 50%. Animation speed to zero and input option to dimmer. Then place three of these squares. Set the first one to red. The second one should be green. And the third one should be blue. And then just wire the timers to the hologram squares in order. You'll see that when you place these on top of each other, it turns different colors. And to show you that the hologram does work for RGB colors, I'm going to connect a toggle to the red timer. It should fade to cyan. Wiring it to green should make it fade to pink. If I connect it to blue, it should make it fade to yellow. That was just showing that it works in a little bit pointed too, not the actual tutorial. Alright, so you can make RGB hologram stickers as well. The way I did that was by placing hologram and I made sure it was on big grid. And then I placed a black sticker covering the whole thing to make it invisible. Now any sticker that's brighter than black will show. So then I lowered the brightness, I copied and pasted it, and I set them to the right colors. And then after doing the wiring, you would just place the squares on top of each other. I just want to give you some background info so you understand what I'm doing. When I wanted to recreate color fading in Little Big Planet, I realized that RGB light displays basically cycle through a color wheel. So I studied this online and I made some observations. 255 is the max value, 0 is the minimum value, and the RGB values increase and decrease as these numbers are reached. Alright, so right now the color wheel is reset and red is at 255. As I move along the wheel, green increases. When green reaches 255, red starts to decrease. When red reaches 0, blue is going to increase. 
When the blue reaches 255, it will cause green to decrease. When the green reaches 0, red will start to increase. When red reaches 255, blue will decrease. And then the cycle will continue. Now that we understand how RGB color fading works, we can recreate it in Little Big Planet. Alright, so by default, these timers are set at 4. But if you increase the time, the colors fade slower. And if you decrease it, it makes it go faster. So I want it to go fast, but not too fast. So I'll set mine at 2. And then we want to make it increase and decrease like we saw on the website. So we're going to use a direction combiner, and we're also going to use a selector, a two-port selector, in combination with this. Because that way, we can set the default. Because by default, red should be increasing, which makes it stay at its maximum. And then blue and green should be decreasing, which makes it stay at zero. So we're going to select these two selectors and set them at two, because remember, positive makes it go forwards, and the negative makes the timer go backwards. So input 1 represents increasing, and input 2 represents decreasing. So we want it so when red is at its max value, like it is now, it should cause green to increase. So that's selector input 1, and you see that it increases to yellow. And then when green is at its max, it should cause red to decrease. And you'll see that it does that. So when red is 0, we're going to detect 0. Not just by using a NOT gate, it's not that simple. I tried that and it had issues. So we're going to use a NOT gate wired to a positional timer. So set a timer to 0 0.1 seconds and set it to positional. Then I'll show you what happens. And I know that they don't have this option in Little Big Planet 2. I'll show you how to do it in that game in a second. So then just copy and paste this. Then connect each timer to each NOT gate. You see that these timers are opposite of each other. So when this timer is empty, this timer is full. And when this is full, this is empty. It's the same thing here. This is empty, so this is full. To make a positional timer in Little Big Planet 2, what you would do is set a timer to 0 0.1. Then set it to speed scale. After that, take out a direction combiner and connect it to the timer. Then connect the timer's output to the negative input. Now I'm just going to copy and paste the timers so you can see the full setup. I'll drag the NOT gates over here. Then you connect each NOT gate to the positive input of each direction combiner. You'll see that it does the exact same thing as the positional timer. On the left is a little bit of 3 version, and on the right is a little bit of 2 version. And the timers are filled up the exact same way. So we can check when the red timer is empty by using this timer. So when this timer is empty, this one is full. So this represents the timer being empty. So when this is empty, it should cause blue to increase. So you see now, it fades to that color. So when this is full, it should cause green to decrease. And then when green is empty, it should cause red to increase. And when red is full, red should cause blue to decrease. You'll see from there, it just loops. It loops forever. So that's how you make a basic one. So you can speed it up or slow it down however you want. So like if you think this is too fast or too slow, so let's say it's too slow for you. So what you do, you can set it to like 1 second to make it faster. So I'm just going to set this one to 1 second max, and then the other timers will be 0. If you're enjoying this video or finding it helpful, don't forget to press the like button. So you see now, it goes a bit faster. So that's how you make basic color changing logic. Alright, so save this to your puppet. And then, if you want to make something like this, then it's not that hard. So what you want to do, is you want to place sticker panel, and make sure it's in big grid. Big grid is right here in the menu. So make sure it's not in grid spaces big. And then, you want to set it at 50% brightness, so you can see the colors blending smoothly. So now, you want to place the microchip, the color fitting microchip. 
turn big grid to off, and then you should be able to place it easily. Pause your game when red is going down like this. So like right here, when red is decreasing, you want to pause it. Set the bottom timer to 0 seconds, and then save it to your poppet. This entire thing will only take 5 poppet spaces, but make sure you have enough room for 5. When this is halfway, save it to your poppet, and you could always adjust it if it's not halfway. So what we're doing now is we're just staggering the colors, and then we're going to place it later. And then let this run for one more second. And then save this. So then you just want to place these next to each other. So turn big grid back on. Make sure it lines up right. Alright, so now you just want to let this run for about 3 seconds. So when blue is halfway. That's when you want to pause it. So when blue is halfway, it's okay if it's not exactly halfway. This looks like it's halfway, but there's actually an invisible decimal place that you can't see. So just change it to one second again. This looks like it should be zero. And this one should be one. So then you just want to save this to your pocket. And then place the rest of these next to each other. Alright, so now what you want to do is let this run for another 6 seconds. So when blue display is halfway again, that's the way you know that it's 6 seconds. Alright, so this isn't exactly 1, so we're just going to set it to 1 again. And then this should be 2. It looks like 2, but it's actually not. So we just set it to 2 again. This one should say 1. So just make sure it's 1. And then this one should say 0. This one should say 1. And then this one should say 2. Just make sure both of these are 2. Alright, so now what you want to do is place these next to each other. If it turns white, that's okay. It doesn't really affect anything. But just place all of these next to each other. Alright, so now what you want to do is you want to save this to your poppet. If you messed up on a step, you could just delete this one and try again, and then save it to your poppet again. But it's not really too hard to mess up. Alright, so now you can unpause it, and you can see the color is fading. A good way to know if you did this right is to follow the color blue. If you can follow it like that, like at this speed, then you'll know that you did it right. You'll notice that the one I did up here is a bit faster. Obviously, it's harder to pause, so instead of trying to pause it at exactly halfway when it's moving this fast, what I recommend doing instead is editing this one. So when this one starts to decrease, that's when we're going to pause it. You should pause it when it's as close to 0.1 as possible. That's because that way it's more accurate and it's easier later on. What we're going to do now is a bit tedious, but basically we're going to make the colors fade faster. You might want 0.5, but you can't divide it easily by 2, so we're just going to set it to 0.6. So set all of these to 0.6. And then this one is halfway. So we're going to set it to 0 0.3 because it looks like it's halfway. This one is definitely full, so it should be 0 0.6. And then this one is empty, so it should be 0 0.0. This one right here, this one is full, but remember, the first step is always to set all of them to 0 0.6. And then this one should be full. It doesn't look full, but it is. And then this one should be zero. Also, you can multi-select them by holding R2 and pressing X, instead of doing it one at a time. So this one should be 0 0.6. Just make sure you take your time with this. This one is halfway. Then this one is empty. I'll show one more before cutting ahead. It's a tedious process, but always remember step one is to set all of them to 0 0.6. This one should be full, so we just say 0 0.6. This one is empty, so it says 0, 0.0. This one is empty, so 0, 
I'll cut ahead so you don't have to watch this. Alright, so if you did it right, it should look like this. You should be able to follow the blue. They should fade one after the other. So like we did before, but faster. But if you mess it up, I'll show you how to fix it. Because it is easy to mess up, but it's also easy to fix. Alright, so if your thing looks like this, what you need to do is you need to rewind. And then, just remember which ones are messed up. So what you want to do now is double check both of these. This one is full, so it should be 0 0.6, which it is. This one is 0 0.6, and then this one is 0, so this one is right. So this must be the one that we messed up somehow. So 0 0.6, this is right. Okay, so this is where we messed up. It should say 0 0.3, because it's halfway. So we just want to set it to that, and then double check this one. And then once we unpause it, it should show the right colors. You can do all 12 if you want, but this is sort of tedious, so I only did half. So yeah, that's how you make an RGB color fading display.